Ah, the Toyota Supra resurrected in 2020 with a lot of opinions coming with that. It has a couple of uh, cues from the Mark IV, this Mark V, but this is not your average 2023 Toyota Supra. This is a special edition. Yes, this is the A91MT, meaning we do have a manual transmission on the inside and they're only building 500 of these. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what's special with this A91 edition and we're gonna talk about this beautiful color, the front side, rear, the interior, and then we're gonna take this for a drive. Before we jump in and talk about the design of this 2023 Toyota Supra, let's talk about some of the basic spec in tech. You have a three liter turbo inline six, 382 horsepower, 368 pound-feet of torque, connected to a six-speed manual transmission. This power is sent to the rear wheels, and zero to 60 is done in 3.9 seconds. Fuel economy sits at 19 city, 27 highway, and the price for this one is $79,990. Now, this specific Supra is for sale at Urban Motors in Denver. I'm going to link this down in the description if you're interested in having this very special, I would say collectible Supra. Click the link down in the description to learn all the details about this car. But let's talk about the front end design here. What I like, what I sort of want to change on this design. So the graphics, let's start with the headlights here. I love how big they are and I also like that it extends further in with this little angle here into closer to the nose of the car. We also have almost an F1 style inspired nose, which I think looks really good. I wasn't sure about that when this first came out. As you know, it, this was based on the FT1 concept. I think that was the, 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 the major uh, reason for my disappointment when this first came out, because the FT1 looked like a proper supercar. And this looked completely different, not in the styling, but the proportions were totally different from the FT1. So looking at these uh, headlights again, we do have some red accents because this is the A91 uh, version edition of this car, meaning that these red accents are gonna come back in the back as well. We're gonna have a look at that in a second. I do like the styling that we have going on down here with this specific line. However, there are too many fake vents in this car in my opinion. And that's a, a couple of things that I want to change. This is fake right here. I'm not sure why they added this plastic piece in this section. They could have just made a nice cut line in the body without having the black plastic right here or make it into a functional vent. Down here, the top part of this area here. This is all fake as well, but it is functional down at the bottom. In the center, let's have a look here and see, this is all functional, which is great. But, so a couple of things that I wanna redesign here is these wings down here. I'm not a huge fan of how these wings are designed. They just end in this point and feel a little weak in the lower section of the car. So I'm gonna play around with that and see what we can come up with. I think we can make it more um, classic looking in the front end. Not has so much complexity, specifically in the lower end, but I do like the top half of the front end. I think that is absolutely gorgeous with the big fenders that we have on the hood itself. Coming around to the side view of the Toyota Supra, and I love the shapes that we have going on here, but Again, I don't know why Toyota added so many fake vents onto this car. We have one fake vent right here in this beautiful muscle going over the rear axle. We also have another fake vent, and this is a vent up here on the hood that I think it would just make sense to make this a functional hole in the hood for that hot air from under the hood to just blow out. But instead, they added a, a different piece of plastic up there to just cover up a, a line that doesn't serve any purpose. Now, looking at these wheels, I love the design of these wheels. These are 19 inch. I don't think they look too small at all. And they have gun metal specific for the A91 edition. And up front, you have Brembo brakes with four piston calipers. I do love how the red set off the contrast with this see you later gray. You can have this car in two different colors. You have burnout, which is sort of a pearl white color, or you can have it in this see you later gray. And this is definitely my favorite color because this color is just absolutely stunning. You have some gold flakes in it when the sun is hitting it on the right spot, looking beautiful. Overall, the proportions of this thing, if I didn't have to see, if I didn't see the FT1 before 
this came out, these proportions are just spot on. But now that you have the reference of the FT1 and you saw this, you saw the exact same styling of the FT1, but the proportion for it a little bit different. I still think this looks very good. I do like that we have the A pillar right here blacked out. When you're sitting in this car, you have the greenhouse sitting very low. Just have a look at the mass that the, that the greenhouse carves out from the rooftop here. It feels like you're almost wearing the roof as a hat when you're driving this car. It feels very cozy in there and I don't mind that at all when you don't have super high windows in the side. You also have the blacked out uh, side mirrors right here with the integrated LED indicator. Now, coming around to the rear end design, the three-quarter rear view of a sports car is usually the most beautiful view, in my opinion. I think that goes for this Toyota Supra as well. Just have a look at this absolutely stunning ducktail up here, how it melts into the trunk itself, and very pronounced. You have a nice curvature right here with the Toyota logo in the middle and the taillights. This takes a lot of inspiration from the FT1 concept. I'm gonna keep coming back to that because it looks exactly the same as, as the concept itself. Moving further down, we do have this massive diffuser with the Formula One style lights right here in the middle. One thing that I think I would like to change here is to have dual exhaust because you can see on the other side, we do have a cutout in the plastic itself of the diffuser where an exhaust is supposed to sit. And this has an aftermarket exhaust here. So this is an RK titanium exhaust on this thing and it sounds really good. We're gonna take a listen to that in just a second. And here's the crazy thing about the rear end. There aren't really any fake vents in here. We do have fake vents in the front all over the place. In the side, the two of them, here in, the, here in the back, we do have this slot here that is covered up. I wish this was also a, a functional air duct for the wheels uh, from coming from the rear wheel wells and the turbulence that goes on there. You could have just opened this up and I'm sure that's possible to do as an aftermarket thing. Nobody would probably even notice if it's open or closed because it's so tight. And then looking at this center right here, this red Supra logo. If you see this red Supra logo on the back of a Supra like this, unless they have bought an aftermarket piece, which is a big no-no, then that means that this is the A91 edition and they only built, as I said, 500 of these. And I hope you can see the color of this thing. I'm gonna try and get the B-roll to capture this gorgeous color because it is really beautiful out here in the sun. Welcome to the interior of the 2023 Toyota Supra A91 MT manual transmission, obviously. I'm gonna fire this up because as you can see, it's very cramped in here, but I don't mind that. The only thing I mind is the car being turned off sitting in 85 degree heat. So let's turn this on and get some air flowing in here. Hopefully it's not gonna be too noisy with this RK exhaust. But here's the thing with this interior. So I'm gonna start by stating the obvious here. Yes, there are a lot of Toy uh, BMW parts in here. This radio controls right here, straight from BMW. I do believe this climate control is also straight from BMW. But who cares if that's what Toyota had to do to make this, uh, to, to be able to create this Toyota and make it financially make sense. That's what they had to do. At least we got a Toyota Supra. I think that's the main takeaway from this uh, collaboration between the two brands. Still, I do like this interior in here. There's a super clean integration of the gauge cluster. The gauge cluster does have a specific design to it, so it doesn't look BMW in the gauge cluster itself. In the center, you have this big tachometer and this exhaust sounds absolutely fantastic. On the left side, you do have the fuel gauge. On the right side, you have these LED bars for the uh, temperature. Looking super clean. It does have a nice housing to it, and you do have a small head-up display up front as well. Looking here, you do have an 8.8 .8 inch infotainment screen. It looks pretty small, but at least it is a touch screen and it is pretty responsive when you're using it just with your fingers. And of course, in true BMW fashion, you still have the dial or the knob down here, which we're gonna talk more about this area in just a minute. Moving further down, you do have very simple uh, adjustable vents right here that you can see the fins and you know exactly where the air is coming out from. Perfect, in the middle here you have the hazard button. And moving further down, you do have the controls for the radio and the climate control, all being tactile and physical buttons, which is absolutely perfect in this car. This is what I wanna see. 
super easy if you're out driving and specifically when you have the manual transmission you're doing all the sh shifting down here you can easily just adjust the vent by scrolling this little dial here perfect you do have heated seats in three levels and all the other controls for the airflow and stuff like that is integrated in this unit as well down here you do have a couple of wings here for the wireless charging so you have you just slide your phone in here it's definitely going to stay in place when you're using this you also have a usb normal port right here and coming to the manual transmission here. So as you know, BMW, the Z4, this is, shares a lot of components with the Z4, and the Z4 only comes as an automatic. And that means that they didn't even consider doing Z4 as a, as a manual. And that means that everything that's engineered in this area was meant to be automatic. So that's why this feels maybe a little bulky. You can see that they switched the position of the dial here to have it way to the right, all the way out here next to the shifter in order to make this work. But I don't mind that at all. It doesn't bother me. It might bother some of the leg space for the passenger, but who cares about that? You still have everything you need in here with this uh, rotary dial to control the 8.8 inch touchscreen up there and this manual transmission feels absolutely fantastic to just roll through the gears and as you do that you do get the number which gear you're in up right center in the tachometer in the gauge cluster I really love that you do have automatic rev matching as well on the downshifts I prefer that yes you can heel toe as much as you want but from day, for daily driver, it just makes for a much smoother and I think a lot more fun driving experience when you have that integrated in the car. Here you have the buttons for the auto engine shut off, the sport button, which puts the car into sport mode and you only have two modes. You have normal, which is no non-sport, and then you have the sport mode. So those are the two options you get to choose from. Here you have the button for the parking assist, traction control, and you have the parking brake here as well. And I do love this carbon fiber that we have in this. I'm not sure if this is an option for the uh, normal Supra, it might be, but in this case, in the A91, it looks really nice to have it go through the entire center piece right here in combination with this cognac interior, this brown leather that we have going on. Moving on to the steering wheel, it's a pretty normal steering wheel. There's nothing crazy about this steering wheel except for that we have the same cognac uh, leather wrapping on the sides in contrast with the black leather up top and down at the bottom. You do have the controls for the volume and the voice commands on the right spoke and to the left spoke is all about the cruise control one thing i do is maybe have a hole here in the in lower section instead of having this plastic piece right in the middle covering everything up to the left side of the steering wheel we do have all the controls very much bmw like this is taken straight out of the bmw as well but if it works why redesign it if you can use the same parts and save a ton of money and which then it's going to carry over to the consumer and the retail price of this car that's why I don't have a problem with a lot of things in here being BMW. But have a look at this. This low section, how this roof just curves down here. And I can barely see the sky when I'm driving. All I see is the concrete wall back there. So it's very claustrophobic in here. And as I said, that's a detail that I don't mind. You have the same feeling in a Camaro. And I like to feel that the car is, that I'm wearing the car almost. And this definitely has that feeling. No sunroof up top. I don't mind that either, as I'm sure you know. And looking at these gorgeous seats here. These are also specific for the A91 edition with this cognac finish to them with some uh, contrast black pieces in the middle right here and you have the silver metal part right here up top in the backrest and these are both power adjustable for the passenger and the driver last but not least we do have a pretty decent sized glove box right here so with that said we talked about the exterior the interior now it's time to hear what this inline six sounds like guys setting off in the 2023 Toyota Supra the A91 edition absolutely fantastic 500 built and uh, as I said this color this spec is amazing in my opinion this is exactly the spec that I would choose for this car I'm coming out of this parking garage here I kind of feel like Clive Owen in those old fantastic BMW commercials from I guess early 2000s, mid 2000s, if you're under 25, you have probably have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I would suggest you instantly go and YouTube those commercials because those were legendary uh, when they came out. Some of the best car commercials I've ever seen. 
So, under the hood, we have a uh, three liter turbocharged inline six, 381 horsepower, zero to 60 in about 3.9 seconds. Not bad at all. That's what we want from a Supra. They boosted the power uh, a year or so back to give this car a little bit more power than what it originally had in 2020. And I think it just suits this car so well to have this extra boost of power. And the thing in the interior here, though, just have a look at the distance here, for example, between the uh, the infotainment screen and the rear view mirror. It's so tight in here and I kind of like it. It feels super cozy and uh, you feel like, as I said, the, you're wearing the car instead of you're driving the car. And I really like that feeling. I do like the rev matching on the downshift as well. It just sounds so good. And it just makes for an automatic smooth transition when you're downshifting. sound so good you can't go wrong with this inline six it's just a fantastic engine this thing and the thing is i haven't driven the automatic supra brakes up front feel fantastic as well they really grip and you have the four piston brembo brakes so that's exactly what they should do So as I said, I haven't driven the automatic Supra, but from what I'm experiencing right now, in this moment, right here, I'm gonna go with the, with the manual transmission Supra because it just feels so good to drive this thing. Let me know what you think about this BMW Ness in here. Do you get the argument that if they were to design everything themselves in here, this car would be a lot more expensive? And I think that argument alone makes it makes it make more of sense to have a lot of BMW parts in here to have the collaboration because why not it's a win-win for everybody the only difference is that you're gonna have maybe a round button instead of a square one and to me that doesn't matter at all Too. I wonder what it sounds like with the stock exhaust but this being the RK exhaust something probably I would put on this car uh, I would want it to have though symmetrical in the rear specifically for this Supra since we have the the hole for it or the section for it in the diffuser thanks so much to Urban Motors for providing this Supra for me to review for you guys today if you're interested in this as I said I'm gonna link this car and their entire inventory down in the description so make sure we go and check that out and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.